Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Building a Better Future, stories from climate tech founders. Throughout this series so far, we've been chatting to startup founders who are still very much in the trenches of those early years in business. And we've been exploring where their love for sustainability began, their journey to founding their company, and learning about what challenges they faced in those first few years as a founder. My name is Cherry. I'm the founder of Above and Beyond Recruitment. Our business partners with climate tech startups and we help them to develop their employer brand and then grow and scale their product and engineering teams. If this is your first time listening to the Building a Better Future series, then please go and check out our previous episodes. Uh, we have heard some brilliant stories. We've heard of founders who came up with the idea of their company during a hackathon. Uh, we've heard about an ex-BBC television producer who founded a climate tech startup with her husband. And we've heard about two co-founders who'd already met and already had a great idea, but joined a venture builder to get more education on the fundamentals of building and financing their startup. You can find all of those recordings um, over on my LinkedIn profile. And there's also an Above and Beyond YouTube channel where they are all uploaded as well. Um, so we'll pop that in the comments and feel free to go and check those out afterwards. Today, we are joined by Charlie French, co-founder of Echo, Launched with his co-founder and incidentally brother-in-law in 2020, they are on a mission to make it easy and effortless to find ethical investment opportunities helping people to put their money where their mouth is. Alongside Echo, Charlie is also a founder and a trustee in two organisations, both dedicated to improving the health, lifestyle and opportunities for communities in Ghana. So I'm looking forward to hearing a lot more about that as well as your startup journey so far. So Charlie, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having me on. Pleasure to be here. So I'm going to start the way I always do, which is going right back to the beginning and kind of exploring those earlier years of your life. So education through to university. Where do you think the kind of inkling for your passion, either in entrepreneurship or sustainability began? Can you kind of pinpoint where, where you think that came from in your life? Um, I guess I've sort of always had uh a sort of passion for for impact i don't i can't really pinpoint exactly a moment in my life where that kind of stemmed from um mm -hmm. as such um it's always been something that has always kind of resonated with me and always kind of wanted to make a difference in, in that space i think from the uh, like starting my own business entrepreneurship i think i remember kind of in year nine we did this sort of like design technology project and we had to come up with like a uh you had to like you're in groups you had to like build a project and build a product and then try and kind of sell that and we came up with like um printing mugs so like you could get pictures printed on mugs and uh then sell them uh to as many people as you could so we used to, like had to like walk around the school go to parents and ask them and um i remember we we won the so that i think whoever made the most sales kind of like won the project and our group won the project and uh i think the teacher was particularly surprised that i was uh in the group that won at the time so they so i think that was um probably where that that initiated or that started um but yeah i think i've always kind of had a drive to start something myself um i'm not entirely sure exactly where that came from but um yeah that's yeah. probably did you know anyone that had done that like in your family or family friends or anything that had done it and you kind of saw it as 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 a possible um i've always sort of looked up to people who have not no like my in my family um not that i can think of directly um mm -hmm. anyone particularly um but yeah i've always sort of whenever i've listened to sort of people speak about these kind of things and I just remember kind of always being quite inspired by by that and kind of always wanting to do something where I was in control of kind of what was um happening and and sort of your vision kind of coming to life I guess in that way um but yeah I think that's definitely always kind of been in me and I've always kind of dreamt of of having that opportunity to to start something myself yeah absolutely so you went off to university studied psychology is that right I did, yeah. So it was a like quite a strange choice. I remember at the time, um, 
like looking back I, I maybe would have studied something differently I, I you know my levels were geography and economics um which are more aligned kind of to what I'm doing now yeah. um but I kind of wanted to do something different um and yeah psychology was um I always found it really interesting like the way that people behave and the way people act and you know there's quite a lot of stuff in psychology that's kind of relevant to to well everyday life really and particularly like running business and what I do now day to day with that show as well kind of around kind of that decision making and behavioral what people are interested in and that kind of thing um but yeah did psychology there uh and Newcastle which was you know an awesome awesome time uh loved it and when I when I left there I ended up working in a job that I really wasn't um enjoy didn't enjoy really at all but it was yeah. kind of um it was yeah it was it was a great experience you know first moved to London and and enjoyed that but um I then got the opportunity to uh, travel to Ghana, which was something that I'd always kind of wanted to do. I'd always wanted to um, visit Africa and travel in Africa. So a friend of a friend uh, kind of was was living out there at the time. So I kind of reached out to him and uh, that's kind of where the journey started. I didn't really intend to go to Ghana with like the intention of I'm going to get involved in like a lot of projects out there I kind of just wanted to go to experience it and 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 see you know just kind of travel really um but then when I got out there I really fell in love with it and I guess that's kind of where the, the sort of impact journey started and it's kind mm. of it's it's come a long way since then um since, since that first sort of trip but and I've learned so much which has kind of led me to where I am today which I can obviously touch upon um throughout this kind of throughout this that, chat but yeah. that trip to Ghana then was that a friend of yours was doing like some work over there doing project work over there and you accompanied or was it more of a holiday so or what was the uh, he so he yeah friend of a friend um he basically set up the this NGO called Dream Big Ghana and um he ran and runs an eco lodge uh eco lodge there so his um his mum's ex-husband uh, started it, started the Eco Lodge. Uh, uh, the Eco Lodge burnt down, and uh, Dougal is his name. And he basically took over that Eco Lodge and set up this NGO. And he was very young when he did that. Um, and so I kind of went over to visit and um, to meet him. And my intention was to sort of help out around um, and you know get involved in some of the sanitation projects that they run. Um, and I just yeah ended up um, loving it and ended up kind of working with them and have since you know since that journey I still work with them to this day I'm a trustee and sort of lead the fundraising side of things uh, for the foundation um, but yeah that's kind of yeah it was it was uh, an awesome experience yeah that sounds amazing and Dougal strong name <laughs> yeah Dougal's a great name yeah it's a it's a very strong name <laughs> yeah, I love that. okay brilliant and so you're still working with them at the moment and then there's another how, did you kind of yeah. get into the other Ghana-based organization as a result of through that 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 the other one you're a founder of right yeah so um yeah through that basically uh we ended up setting up some projects um mm -hmm. so really kind of when I was there kind of and through various other trips back, we kind of set up some some new projects, which is really exciting. So they kind of focus on kind of uh, creativity, entrepreneurship and stuff like that. Um, they've kind of evolved throughout the time as well. Um, but yeah, we set up the Meet Me There project, which um, kind of aims to promote that creativity and entrepreneurship within um, young yeah young people basically um or all, all all ages actually there's there's some stuff um around adult literacy that we do there as well so there's 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 lots that we um that we do in the space and yeah set that up um as like a facet of the foundation so the foundation's like the overall um funding body basically to these projects and then um with, of which I'm a trustee and then kind of yeah I founded my own kind of segment of one of the projects that they support basically um okay. with with Dougal alongside so yeah fantastic that's amazing so you're kind of taking these trips to Ghana starting to do this work whilst also still doing the job you didn't love at what point did yeah you kind of so I actually um was doing that in Ghana and I had I was actually working 
yeah, still kind of working in, in a space that I wasn't particularly resonating with. I knew that I wanted to kind of move more into the impact space um, and ended up working then for an NGO called Farm Africa and kind of leading, uh, doing stuff with corporate partnerships, uh, doing stuff around um, how corporates can kind of more align themselves to towards like various projects and what they can basically do in there. Um, and really, I guess this is where like at Farm Africa is where I really started looking at the bigger picture of like what was going on and how we could create more sort of impact. Um, I started like studying for CFA and ESG and I was looking at like, I guess I was getting a bit frustrated with like the, the, the like the impact space is awesome. Not for profit space is, is great. And there's absolutely room for that. But if you wanted to kind of create change on a large scale, I kind of started seeing and more of what I was kind of reading and getting into was more this kind of whole shift around like, can we change like financial institutions? Can we change the way that people invest? Can we actually change the whole like kind of economic outlet? And that would actually drive real change. Like, don't get me wrong, as I said, like the not-for-profit sector does, it does amazing things. But until you start like shifting whole like kind of outlooks of economies, then it's you know you're not you're kind of only making a, like little splash and i really get i guess started thinking like we need to like yeah getting a bit frustrated with the lack of kind of change that that was coming there so i kind of set my sights on on um start building something like like echo i guess um then so that was a few yeah a few years before a couple of years before actually coming up with it and then i left uh, Farm Africa to, to end up at UN agency UNICEF and again I was more working there with the sustainable development goals uh, working with larger corporations at this point so like London Stock Exchange, AstraZeneca and again awesome um, great work but again like I guess frustrated with the lack of like th these are great that these projects are, are getting put aside but like what's actually going on within the business can we can we kind of like show that um, can we, or, or, you know, uh, companies that are doing great things, like, can we promote that somewhere, somehow? Can we, can we show that th this company is really like amazing and aligned to, to what people care about? And then I guess in their own personal journey of like investing as well, like finding it very difficult to find anywhere that, that kind of gave you this information around like, you know, here's, here's a fund that's got these companies in it. Okay. That's cool. But what? what is going on with these companies? Who are these companies? Like, you know, um, I guess that, and then realizing that there was, yeah, that, that opportunity to kind of bring, bring that to life and kind of show people what's actually going on with companies, like how responsible are companies, what projects do they have, what, you know, what products do they sell that are kind of aligning to the future. And I guess that's where my time at my time at UNICEF, that's when I started like thinking of, of that, um, of how we could basically do that. And then obviously, my brother-in-law being um lyle who um is also my co-founder we've been friends for for a very long time um and he works his friends within first brothers-in-law second it's actually a bit of a funny story he was um he was friends with my brother first and then we were friends and then uh yeah brother-in-law third i guess um wow. <laughs> he's very he's very um intertwined in the in the family so um there's no escaping <laughs> for lyle um which is <laughs> which is funny um yeah it's always funny explaining that bit but yeah he he was working at esg data at the time we, we've always been very aligned on um on our beliefs and our thinking of the world like you know i remember christmases years ago so we would kind of give each other i think he gave me a book and i gave him a book like reshaping capitalism for example and just kind of talking about how we'd always kind of had those conversations um there was one point when we were like pretty down a wormhole of thinking that we should start a seaweed farm um because there was those we've done loads of reading into kind of like how seaweed there's, there's basically research i can't remember the exact stat but there's research if you put seaweed in um cow feed it reduces the methane of their farts by up to like yeah. I'm gonna say, don't quote me on this. It's between like eighty and ninety percent, I think. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I think, I think I could be wrong, um, but it's it's a lot. So we were like, oh, you know, seaweed. But you know, realistically, we didn't have any experience in 
seaweed whereas we had <laughs> experience in in like you know i was working at standard and pools and esg data i was working corporate social responsibility like we knew that area very well mm. um and then it was yeah uh, it was first lockdown that um lyle sent me a voice note of the 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 kind of idea he'd had this idea and then we kind of um started like looking into it we did a lot of research into it spoke to people to kind of validate the idea got like, people on board um and obviously we were still working in our jobs at the time so stuff was like fairly moving fairly slowly so that was 2020 and it wasn't really until summer 2021 that we kind of really went for it um i would say but yeah that kind of and what gave you the general. confidence at that point then so you'd been kind of working on it part-time around your jobs during lockdown yeah. What was the tipping point, do you think, of, right, we're going to go all in on this? Um, so we did quite a lot of validation of, like, the idea. We spent a long time, like, is this idea, is it just something that, like, we think is really cool or is it something that actually people want? Um, so initially our idea, our idea has, like, changed a lot since, since then, obviously, um, as you might expect. But um, initially the idea was to, to build basically a, a trading platform um mm. that, that kind of shows sustainability and also kind of gave you that kind of look through on um on how sustainable your portfolio is um which isn't a million miles away from what we what we are still doing but it's just that that was the initial plan um mm. and so it took us like we spent a lot of time we, we got, got a mate of mine from you unique will who's really good at kind of design thinking and um strategy and that sort of thing and we, we worked really closely with him uh, um and we did a lot of kind of research into do are people actually interested in this area do people kind of want to do this um and what we found was overwhelmingly yes that people did so we were like okay let's um let's like you know put the wheels in motion and see what we can ha like it, can we actually do this so we spent like a long time sort of like putting in uh you know cool. luckily we work from home i like i always think like if if the lockdown hadn't happened like we there's no way we would have been able to do it because like we <laughs> we you know we were having a lot of calls where if you're in an office with your day job you wouldn't have been able to like just be like i'm just going off for this so luckily that you know it was a real blessing actually that we were able to do that um but yeah we we did a lot of research into like how like how would we actually do this like what would we need to kind of create this um and kind of that took quite quite a long time just to like work all of all of those logistics out you know like okay how do we get trading infrastructure into the app like we knew how we could measure the companies and we knew how we could do that but it was like getting that those infrastructure pieces how are we going to do that um, and then luckily, like my partner's um, designer, uh, digital designer. So we managed to kind of um, really, I mean, we still do, but use her as uh, get lots of favors off her um, in terms of like building up like this, a website that kind of like had like a splash page of, um, you know, collecting emails and people who were interested. Um, and we kind of just like, just ran that and just kind of were like, okay, let's, let's start let's let, let's kind of like start this and see see what happens um and then what gave us the confidence i guess to to go for it i think we got put into a position where we were like okay we validated this idea um from our research we now know like what we need to actually build it we know what we like kind of the funds that we would need to do that um we like kind of have people who are actually signing up to this idea like on our website and we were like, so it's kind of like we're at a crossroads where you're like, we either go for this and try and raise money or we or we just kind of like leave it as one of those things that you just thought about and, like, you know, you can look back on for a long time. I mean, like, the, yeah, I've, I've done stuff like that in the past. Like when I, I remember once a few years ago, I, I tried to start like this food delivery business that was only for um, that was only for breakfast because like where I lived at the time uh there was no shop and I remember I used to always wake up like with no food and uh like you do um on like on a weekend after like a, a night out and I used to always think like it would be great for someone to deliver food 
that was just breakfast food. So like I set up this thing and anyway, I only, it was like my mobile phone and like I would buy buy in the ingredients and then I only I ended up doing it like one weekend, but I like delivered food um, and I only got one call and it was over in Essex and I lived in South East London and I was like, oh God, can't do it. But anyway, that's uh, like, be on by the by um i guess yeah you get to a crossroads where you think like are we gonna actually make something of this where we're gonna like do do something or are we gonna just yeah let it be one of those ideas that you had that you kind of like got to a certain point and then you're always wondering like what if and then a year later you see that someone else someone's brought out that that kind of mm. what you were dreaming of um and so we were like no we, we've we've got to do it so we yeah. yeah we went and uh we we yeah, we had our pitch deck ready and we were kind of like sh pitching it to a few people and then i think it was when we got our first kind of commitment that we were like okay from an angel we were like okay well um i guess it's time to sort of go full time on this um and we did that we raised for for a few months full time uh, um and that was at the end of our summer uh so 2021 mm -hmm. um and yeah, we raised the funds and they came in on Christmas Eve, um, or the round closed on Christmas Eve, uh, which was, which was great. Um, nice and, Christmas present. <laughs> yeah, it was a great, nice, nice Christmas present. Um, yeah, a bit of a stressful run up to Christmas, but it was I uh, bet. <laughs> all worth it in the end. Um, yeah. And then we kind of just moved really fast this year and we've learned so much mm. since, since, um, since that we pivoted a little bit, you know, like going from just a straight B to C kind of direct like app. Whereas now we're kind of looking more to service kind of like um, other businesses with, with the data that we can provide in the way that we kind of integrate that data and visualize it. Um, we sent more of a kind of opportunity there to reach our mission faster. So, you, you yeah. know, we can reach more people by doing that. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, we've changed a lot and it's been, but it's been a really exciting journey kind of up to now. Yeah. And so, in terms of the angel funding, what did that enable you to do then that you hadn't been able to do to that point? So you got the money in, what you said you pivoted, but from a in practical terms, once the money was in the bank, what were those yeah. next steps for you? Yeah, uh, so it kind of enabled us. So the, the startup costs of building an, an app are obviously a lot. Like it's not something that you can just sort of, well, not something that we could just bootstrap it, bootstrapped. So it we kind of needed the funding and we needed angels to like buy into what we the vision of what we feel that we could create and mm. um like so when we got the funding the first thing to do was to kind of build and put together sort of um the tech team and how we actually um yeah who who we put together because myself and i were not sort of tech founders um you know we've got domain expertise but we don't have the sort of tech backgrounds um so there was a lot of kind of um we basically were going to outsource the tech build to um an agency based in belarus mm. and um like i don't want to say luckily but it has turned out to be you know um kind of yeah really unfortunate what's what's happened to like that sort of part of the world yeah. and like know it, it would have been pretty tough working with an agency based there um given the like you know there's the really sad state of affairs that's that's happening um but one of our so will the guy who i spoke about earlier he had a friend who worked in tech um and was a tech agency owner and he actually had seen our pitch because we went on crowdcube he'd seen our pitch and invested in us and on crowdcube and uh he just wanted to we wanted to just introduce James his name's James uh to us and just have like kind of an informal chat around kind of like you know what we're building kind of talk about what the plans were for the tech build and after the chat uh we had a really you know good chat with him and at the time I don't think either of us really thought that we would end up kind of working together but then after the chat I think uh, James emailed us and said look I've been thinking about it and um I'm kind of coming to the end of my time at running this agency. I'm sort of maybe looking for something anyway, and I really feel that I could um, build 
build what you guys are, are trying to build um so we were like that's that's great like obviously that relationship through um will having that trust there already with him obviously seeing what he'd built before um having someone uk based and someone that's invested in the business as well who's kind of interested in in helping us out so we were super lucky with with that and like so um grateful for all of james's work so far really and so so great to have him as part of the team um so yeah he came on board uh we pulled together uh like product designer uh in max and we had my partner georgie who was able to do some of the graphics which is really cool um and we also um yeah got your help with uh recruiting recruiting another uh tech uh person which was awesome um and yeah and we kind of went from there and because we'd done so much sort of build up so like to, to make sure that we could do it we knew exactly who we were going to be using so we didn't have to like apart from building that team the the back all the other bits we had basically sorted before we had the funding in um which enabled right. us to move really really fast so like we didn't have to kind of mess around trying to like find out stuff like negotiate stuff on contracts and all of that kind of thing we kind of had that all ready to go um because yeah because of that pre-work that we'd done so that was mm -hmm. kind of um that, that 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 was the yeah well i don't want to say the easy bit but that was kind of done um before so it was just kind of getting that team together and yeah we were super lucky really with like the way that everyone bought into what we were building um mm -hmm. you know like you're never sure or if people who come on board are going to kind of like understand the vision and the mission as as well as they did but we were really lucky with that everyone kind of who's been working on it so far has has really kind of got that and kind of been bought into it and yeah that's been that's been awesome yeah amazing and it is it looks beautiful as well i've came to an launch event and yeah it's it's fantastic um and Thanks. slight kind of pivot them from that mvp that you built so the initial mvp that that team built that the angel money funded you to build um was was sort of the first iteration of what you then want to build upon is that right so what what does it look like today in terms yeah, of yeah so uh that's right like i guess uh what we set out to build was basically an informational app that kind of like enabled people to research investments match align match up to investment opportunities with their impact goals so you know you select what you kind of care about and you get shown investment opportunities that align to what what you've selected um and also kind of enabling you to kind of input current portfolios and show you the alignment to um to, to like the to the sustainable development goals and also the carbon footprint so that was kind of what we set out to to build from that initial angel funding um we then sort of through kind of user research um through having the app out there and through the development of the app like we found that there's like this sort of why can't what we've built actually be plugged into like other platforms and why can't the data that we've got actually kind of help sort of wealth managers or financial advisors to kind of like communicate that impact to their clients and we had wealth managers and financial advisors who used the app and kind of got in contact with us and said look like this is really cool is there a way that we could use this to communicate to our clients and, and that kind of thing so it wasn't it wasn't that we hadn't necessarily thought of that angle but the angle kind of came to us in a, in a mm -hmm. funny way and we were like okay like why don't we pursue that like as as a route um of kind of developing echo and um and kind of then when we you know spoke to uh, uh people who were using the app um they were like you know like it'd be really great to see this stuff on my current investment platform and so like again so we then went back into this like i guess research phase again where we were like okay let's try and validate this idea with advisors wealth managers and tech platforms that they would see this as something that's valuable so we spent a lot of the summer kind of like working out exactly what was going to be valuable to um to people um to those platforms to those potential clients and um we kind of set upon the sort of product suite that we now have built or are in development of building um some of them um but yeah that that's kind of been that journey to to, to where we are now um so it's like slight, slightly different idea but it's the sort of the same same vision same mission slightly different journey um to get there yeah. 
Absolutely. And from that kind of wealth manager perspective, then that's enabling them because there's been quite a lot of talk around kind of greenwashing on eth ethical yeah. funds and in green funds, isn't there? So it's to enable yeah. wealth managers to put funds together that you can then it's, see the impact of those funds. Yeah. Well, so it's, um, it, it's to help them basically communicate to their clients around impact. So we know how many people right. are interested in impact. I think it's some studies suggest it's like up to 90% among millennials. There's other studies that suggest, um, kind of different figures, but that's, that's kind of the leading one. I think it's like 84% of people want to align their investments to their impact goals. I think there's some studies around wealth managers kind of failing to connect with their audiences. I think in millennials or under 35, um, I think 60% of people said that they would invest more money if they were, if their portfolios aligned better to their impact goals. So there's kind of like this opportunity for wealth managers to like speak to, or advisors to like speak to clients about impact as it's becoming bigger and bigger, yeah. of, like, you know, on people's minds. Um, and I think like what we want to do is, is enable them to make it easier for them to communicate the impact of investments to, to their clients and easier for them to like understand their clients, um, like sustainability desires and the impact kind of what they're, what they kind of want from that and really getting that impact focus in, into, um, investments, which I think, you know, we're seeing like a huge drive towards, and there's obviously a huge benefit to advisors and wealth managers to kind of get that relationship um and kind of modernize their way of thinking as well um so that's that's kind of the the angle there yeah yeah i love that okay perfect um so where where are you guys at today then so you you use that money to build that iteration of the platform you then spent the summer thinking about this kind of wealth manager and plug in and sort of slightly more b2b yeah. play yeah um where are you today and what are the plans for for the future yeah so it's exciting we should be launching our new site that reflects our sort of new offerings this week um we kind Ooh, of um which which is cool because like we've known for quite a while that we're kind of doing that but obviously the external facing stuff is still just kind of like showing the app and stuff like that which is awesome but it's exciting to kind of have have a, a site that kind of shows our full capabilities um we are yeah looking to we'll be looking to you raise um funding like from from now really our next round um so so that's open um and really just to accelerate us like we built some really exciting traction uh we've got um yeah kind of our impact reports our, our research portal and our api and plugin available when we're kind of having really really great conversations with with, with platforms wealth managers and advisors um around what we can provide for them so you know hopefully um soon we'll be able to kind of announce some exciting uh, partnerships uh there so yeah that's that's kind of where we're where we're heading um and yeah we're we're just kind of excited to try and get kind of impact data to, to everyone where, wherever they invest really um and kind of crack open crack open the finance industry and give people the transparency that they deserve Mm, absolutely. And one of the things that um, I thought was interesting, I came to the launch event, as I said before, that you guys did in the summer. Um, and one of the things you talked about there was appointing some people to your board, like advisory board, yeah. and that you were putting yeah. an advisory board together. Um, so talk me through why, why, why did you decide to do that at this point in your journey? How did you identify who those people would be? And, and what's the benefit that having an advisory board has brought you over the last few months since you've done that? Yeah, sure. So I think like it's really great to surround yourself with people who are either kind of like experts in the domain or kind of even just having somebody who's because myself and I, you know, like we're, we're close outside of work and we, you know, work very closely together. It's really great to be able to kind of bounce ideas off other people as well. Um, yeah. And so I think and someone that you know knows the space well or has expertise in an area that 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 can add uh, value then it's really really great to kind of get their insights they can point you in the right direction if you're kind of wanting to develop a certain product line like they can uh, point you in that direction um so like i think it's like we brought them on board in the summer um and yeah the timing of that really was as we kind of decided to shift uh what our focus was going to be on 
right. um, we decided that we needed to kind of bolster out that team um, and just get some more ideas really flowing. Um, and yeah, they've been really, really great. So yeah, we'd, we'd highly advise getting an advisor. <laughs> Yeah. And when you're doing that, when you're thinking, right, we, we, we're going to, you know, we could use with use an advisory board, you see that it would be beneficial. How do you physically go and attract those people? I mean, do you identify people that you think could bring real value to the business and just go out and cold approach them? Or does it tend to be that you're introduced to somebody through someone? I mean, how, how did you find your advisors? Um, Henry, we found he came on board as an investor um, in the business and was really kind of uh, interested in what we were building. We had a few chats with him and he had some really great ideas and it kind of just made sense um, to kind of get get him in um, as an advisor and like, like, you know, he's been really amazing since. Um, yeah, hugely grateful for all the work that Henry does for us. Um, with the other two, they were uh, uh, Rochelle March. Um, she's headed up the SDG product at S and P while I was there. Um, I remember listening to a talk with her on it um, a few years ago, and just yeah, always. I then connected her on LinkedIn, and like was always uh, sort of really kind of uh, yeah admired the work that she did and um lyle did as well and obviously lyle had that connection with her from um previous work experience so they uh we we kind of yeah reached out to her and uh, she was really excited by what we we're building and um yeah she she came on board and then kenzo i think lyle and kenzo actually went to uni together so um again uh, that, that kind of connection there Okay, so people that you kind of in some way were familiar with or knew anyway, so it wasn't a completely cold approach. Um, yeah, it wasn't totally cold, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd been speaking to them um, about Echo before it was, so we'd kind of introduced them to the idea um, around it before and then kind of we kept them updated with like what was going on and then kind of as they became clearly more interested in kind of what we were doing and that's when that conversation came about so yeah. it wasn't necessarily a cold um approach no it was it was sort of more nurtured approach i guess yeah yeah that makes sense and do you kind of have regular meetings like a sort of advisory board meetings or is it more of an ad hoc you reach out to one of them as and when you need them about a particular issue or both um so with henry we have regular meetings uh with the others it's slightly more ad hoc um mm -hmm. kind of like if there's uh you know we, we kind of put in regular catch-ups every kind of couple of months um and yeah and then, the, and then they're always on hand if there's anything uh that we kind of want to discuss so mm -hmm. there's um or if there's a particular area that we're like that that really suits you know that that person and we'll, we'll go to go to that person to kind of get their opinion um so yeah i think that's kind of where that relationship sits i think slightly more ad hoc but like very much they're on hand to kind of help when as as and when we need them which is great yeah amazing so you've got your advisory board you've got yourself and lyle will james and, and the others you mentioned were kind of with you on a on more of a, a contract basis um yeah. is it just yourself and lyle or are you you've kind of grown that team any further since um so full time it's just myself and lyle james uh will be coming on board uh next year which we're excited about full time um and uh so he's been contracting with us uh majority of this year um and he's yeah as i said he's been brilliant and, and yeah depending on uh the, the raise we'll be looking to expand the team um in various different ways uh so yeah we are we're having conversations with people now um who have reached out in various different ways who uh, who you know we'd love to bring on board um and join the team um but yeah obviously it, it's sort of dependent on um how the next few months go yeah yeah so yeah. very raise dependent yeah um, okay so if people are interested in investing um and if people who are listening to this want to learn more about how they could do that um what's the best way to get in touch with you um yeah just drop me a message on on linkedin um and yeah i'd love to arrange a call and kind of tell you a little bit more more about what we're building and what we're hoping to achieve um and yeah i think yeah my my kind of linkedin's open or get in touch via the website um which is echo.io um but yeah 
it'd be great to hear from you. Amazing. Perfect. So it sounds like a really exciting few months ahead then. Raising, getting that money in, hopefully as a result of that, James coming on board permanently to head up your technical team and then mm -hmm. looking at, you know, furthering these partnerships and these conversations that you've started with, you know, different investment platforms and looking at developing the API, the open API and yeah, building out that kind of B2B offering. That sounds really exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the plan. And uh, yeah, really excited for the next what the next few months brings. Amazing, amazing. And yeah, I definitely, you know, in terms of just personal experience, have found in the past, whenever I've dabbled in investing, and I say dabbled in the like most <laughs> loose yeah. term possible, right? <laughs> but my experience of it was literally opening like a Hargreaves Lansdowne account and going into there with little to no knowledge of investment whatsoever, and just seeing all these company names. And there was no real in information about those organizations at all or what you're, you know, all it was was numbers like dividends and yields and uh, yeah. any of that meant. And yeah, so to have somewhere you could go that would give you more information about who that company was that you were investing in and what that money was being used for, mm -hmm. I think you know, is, is and has been sorely missing. So it's a really valuable thing you guys are doing. Um, so I always round off um, by asking three quick fire questions, mm -hmm. um, cool. if you don't mind. So the first yeah, one cool. is, what would your top piece of advice be to somebody who was thinking about setting up their own business? Um, top piece of advice would be to make sure that you surround yourself with um, people who kind of are believing in what you are doing, like have the same sort of values and mission that you are setting out to achieve mm -hmm. um i think that's <clears throat> so important um sorry <clears throat> i think that's so important to, to kind of have that kind of alignment within the team within you know if you're co-founding it with someone or anyone that you eventually bring on board uh really needs to be have the same kind of yeah end goals have the same kind of vision as you because i think that's kind of ultimately that's the reason why you do it and you have a lot of times where that are you know not not easy and you need to be driven by that by that kind of mission and that vision and um mm. i think having people around you who are also kind of driven by the same values or driven by the same kind of goals that just helps you drive on because naturally you know there's times where you'll need someone to pull you up and you'll have times where you're pulling them up but i think it's yeah making sure that that when you bring people on board it's people that you get on with people that you trust and people that have uh same values as you yeah, amazing. And, you know, you, you said a couple of times through this conversation that that's, you know, been something that has been really beneficial to you guys. But one of the themes I noticed was that two of the people had already invested in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah, we're, we're lucky with that. I mean, I guess that's the beauty of, of uh, platforms like Crowdcube or, you know, Cedars. Um, you, you're able to kind of get your 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 vision out there and uh, enable people to kind of invest in what you're building. Um, and from that, you know, you, you open up some really amazing conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. Um, and which question number two, which business or sustainability role model do you wish that you could have just one hour with? Um, I think, um, that would probably be, uh, I think his name is Bevis Watts at Triodos Bank. Um, oh, okay. He's the CEO, I think. I can't actually uh, remember, but, but he, um, yeah, I think he's the CEO of Triodos. Um, well, he works at Triodos basically anyway, very high up at, at Triodos. And Triodos Bank are a really, really cool um, bank. If you've not heard of them, then I would urge you to check check them out and think about switching your current account to, to them. Um, all about kind of sustainability, really transparent around that, what they do. Um, and just, yeah, I'd love to kind of have an hour um, with him and kind of talk about, um, yeah, his journey and, you know, what they're kind of seeing in the space. And mm -hmm. I guess just an organization, uh, like a company that I've sort of followed and championed for a long time. So it'd be really interesting to, to have that time with, with him. Yeah, absolutely. They come up top of all of the, you know, most ethical banking. Yeah lists don't they? yeah they're awesome and you get a really cool um you get a really cool debit card as well that's like looks yeah. like a leaf oh, cool. um so i would i would highly recommend yeah oh nice um and third one is what what is one quick lifestyle change that you would recommend to anyone listening that could help them live more sustainably just one quick thing that they could do that would have a big impact um like 
try to cycle places like um uh, if you can i mean it's 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 so easy now with like line bikes and um you know various other kind of means of transport i mean just get get a bike it's it's you know i love well i never actually used to love cycling but i now kind of do um through that i would say that that's a great way to kind of live more sustainably i think also we um recently signed up to those um those kind of like we we signed up to a few um like hello fresh mindful chef those kind of food delivery um things i think you can cut your carbon footprint can't remember the stats so um don't quote me on it but you can there's a huge there's a huge amount of uh obviously food waste that if you're just going to the shop and kind of buying each time so you you manage to kind of fully reduce your food waste um by kind of signing up to those um those kind of products and also i believe that your carbon footprint from that uh is reduced massively um i don't want to say the stack because i can't remember it but it's um, going to make up another percentage it's a big number i'm not going to make up another percentage my brain's not really working today um (laughs) unfortunately but yeah that that those are the yeah those are two kind of fairly easy switches and also the food's pretty tasty so and you don't have to worry about anything if you go for the um vegetarian option or the vegan option obviously absolutely do you know i've signed up for back in july plastic free yeah. july one of the switches i made that i've stuck to and love is signed up for an organic veg box very nice yeah, yeah. so i did a one local to me i live near cambridge so i've done the cambridge organic veg box yeah. and i love it so yeah, nice. every friday a box arrives on my doorstep and it is like living ready steady cook every week because you're like what yeah. have i got in the box yeah. this week and I have to like build yeah, all yeah. your recipes around it but it's just a really great way of yeah being more sustainable it's cuts down plastic waste all of the food is seasonal um yeah. it's all been grown you know up the road um yeah and encourages you to cook slightly more varied things which is you know, yeah quite exactly nice well. i think that's that's the thing at like they're, they're, they're great for that i don't know i always run out of ideas so it's it's always kind of nice when you've got something that just kind of is there that you can go okay cool i can um i can just cook this instead of having to think about it go to the shop and do all of that exactly, stuff. So, exactly you know, that. It's, it's beneficial in more ways than one yeah although i am running out of things to do with savoy cabbage this week so if anyone's got <laughs> any tips <laughs> <laughs> there we go cool well it's been so lovely to chat to you thank you so much for coming on charlie uh, thanks very um, much for i think, me. I think there's loads of stuff in there for people whether you're interested in investment whether you're interested in kind of green funds and ethical investments you know definitely go and have a look at what um charlie and i are doing with echo but i think also just really valuable for anybody that's perhaps working in a job they don't love or you know has got this idea and they're thinking how do i alongside work just try and get this off the ground i think charlie's been a great example of that so yeah thank you so much for sharing with us thanks a lot thanks for having me it's been a real pleasure perfect have a lovely day take care see you soon bye